So let's talk, consider for a moment the whole concept, the whole idea, um, maybe the anatomy and the physiology of what it means to have grounded energy. Um, if we continue the idea that we cannot separate the energy and tissue, if we're, we have all these energetic pieces that are energetic representations and completely connected, all these physical pieces. So energetic spiritual law, one of which is grounding, has its roots in engineering and physics in anatomy and physiology. So there's a, a physical basis, if you will, a formula that we have to think about. It's, it's, it's one thing to say, ground your energy. It's another thing to do it. You have to actually you know, root yourself so that you're immovable. Root yourself so that you are deeply connected to earth energy. Um, so that your power increases, so that your balance improves, so that your stability increases. Uh, that you become an immovable force. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the energetic anatomy, the spiritual anatomy of it, and just mention a little bit of the physical anatomy. Because we will be potentially limited energetically by stuff that the physical body won't support. Let's, let's just start with with a simple energetic consideration. When we ground, when we connect ourselves with the earth, what are we really doing? Um, in all the traditions I know to which I've been exposed, um, there are three structures that, that connect us into the earth. In my healing practice, it's essential to, to draw and connect to the earth all the time. So I um, developed that capacity. I mean, I grew up doing martial arts, but I, I've developed and expanded on that to make myself a more effective healer so I can help people better, um, help more people better than I could ungrounded. Um, people talk about the feet, the bubbling spring points or the, or the little root chakras and the soles of the feet that are embedded in the, the deep palmar fascia. The, when people talk about plantar fasciitis, it's that deep suspensory fascia that connects to the cables that go all the way up the legs into the pelvis. Um, the conductive sinews that the Taoists were so concerned about opening because that's the source of the energy that nourishes us. Um, the capacity of those little root chakras and the soles of the feet to open and extend themselves like suction cups into the earth is limited by the integrity of the fascia. Hence the need to do opening practices, stretching, qigong practices especially. There's a qigong tradition called yi jing jing, called sinew transformation. And those conductive cables that connect to the chakras and the soles of the feet are among the most important sinews that we want to transform so they become superconductors. The same thing exists in the palms, up the arms, into the core of the body. So we have to have an effective um, cable system to manage our key first. Um, and we have to make sure that that cable system is unkinked, it's not knotted, it's not broken. And, um, and as we, rather than drive the key down, if we just open up, its natural proclivity, its natural tendency is to sink deep in the earth and contact Earth Mother, if you want to use the Native American expression for it. That's only half of the equation. Um, the much more extensive connection to the earth. Um, there's a Native American prayer where they talk about um, May Sky Father and Earth Mother meet in my heart um, and be uh, apart no longer um, so I, that I may live with a full heart, live in their embrace um, in love or joy. Um, what that is, is when we look at it energetically, is, you know what a taproot is? It's a carrot. It could be a parsnip. It's a big root that drives itself into the earth. 
Um, Douglas fir trees are known for their tap roots. Um, when we look at somebody energetically, we see that there's a, a, an energetic taproot extending from the pelvic diaphragm and the first chakra down into the earth. This, uh, you might use the word big ass taproot, going literally, right? Going into the earth. And there are a number of traumas and compromises, childbirth, motor vehicle accidents, surgeries, uh, bad falls, which can compromise that taproot. And at the same time, if we look at as above, so below, if we've got a taproot going down into Earth Mother, really extending from our heart through the pelvic diaphragm, we have the same taproot going up into the sky. And it's the, the dance between the two of them, the inner penetration and the embrace of them in our heart that actually creates a groundedness. So we can't ground into the earth if we're not connected to the sky, if we're not in balance. And we can't ground into the earth if our taproot's been, sometimes it's shattered, sometimes it's pulled up into the body, sometimes it's not there. So in the process of healing people, that's one of the most important things I do because that taproot energy is also hugely important as the energy that we use to, uh, to heal and regulate ourselves. Um, and that taproot then connects to the accessory flow that comes up, those cables, those fiber optic cables I mentioned that are coming up from the earth through the, the fascia, the deep plantar fascia of the foot and up those fiber optic sinews into the pelvic floor into that, or back to the tanden. Um, which we can't separate from the heart, which is the middle of those fields, the green field or the, or the rose field. Um, so how do we ground? I begin by first, it's, it almost feels like opening up a trap door and allowing the consciousness of my pelvic floor to spill through the floor, through the walls, down into the earth. And you can ground as low as you want. You can reach deeply into the earth. I wait. I allow that, like, like spilling down a chute, that consciousness I have to reach into the earth until I feel something connect and reach back up. That's my routine grounding. And I do the same thing then with the soles of my feet. Um, it feels like the pelvic floor initiates, um, the pelvic diaphragm, the lower taproot um, initiates, and then my feet will follow. Um, and under normal circumstances, I ground to where I feel the embrace of the Earth Mother, and I feel a connection from her reaching back up. And when you do it, and if you manage to allow yourself to kind of like open up and kind of spill into the earth, the sense of being met, the sense of the embrace, and the sense of an, another flow coming back up is profound. It's not subtle at all. Um, at least that's my experience and the experience of my students. Um, for specific reasons, you can ground further. You can ground until you feel the red energy at the core of the planet. Uh, you call it the sort of magma ball at our center. And that's a, a profound red, a profound kind of magma. Um, not routinely done, it's not necessary. There are specific healing practices and probably I would suspect martial practices that would, would embrace that. Um, but I don't think necessary. Um, and again, as with before, when we talk about the larger unit of function, uh, in order to be able to activate and access grounding energy, our pelvis has to be balanced. Our diaphragm in the pelvic floor can't be traumatized and strained. The weight-bearing mechanism, you know, the, the, the foundation of the building has to be in balance, kind of plumb and level, like we talk about. Um, I had a hip trauma, a bad bike crash, tore my hip up, it eventually needed to be replaced. I noticed in grounding I had to work three times harder against tremendous resistance to probably get a quarter of the, of the grounding I could do 
until I actually, in the words of one of my colleagues, succumbed to technology and had a brand new, perfectly round, perfectly made ceramic kit to replace my other one. And probably six hours after the surgery, you know, it's a minimally invasive procedure, they stood me up in a walker as soon as I woke up after the anesthesia. And this is right after the thing was replaced. And suddenly, the amount of grounding energy and the amount of earth contact and the openness of my pelvic floor was so disorienting, it was so huge, it almost brought tears to my eyes because I didn't realize uh, in the years of, since the damage and the attempted healing and the compromise, how much my ability to ground had been compromised. When all of a sudden it was like fire hoses of grounding. And the grounding, interestingly, because I alluded to it, I don't believe in the experience of my teachers, it's not the force into the earth that grounds us, it's letting ourselves sink into the embrace of the earth and it's the lift and it's the chi that comes out of the earth that embraces us, that grounds us. If you sit in, I know the Chinese names for them, in Ma Bo, which is horse stance, um, right around the time, if you initiate by, by doing the three steps I talked about or the two steps, softening and letting your pelvis descend until the earth reaches up and the same thing with your feet so you have a tripod that you're you basically three little elevators into the earth and then earth starts to lift up and support if you start to do horse i think anybody that's done horse at all realizes a point where your your muscles just kind of like die out they start you know they in the, the profound words of the of the, of the neuro neurophysiologist they crap out and if you haven't grounded, you'll fatigue and, you'll, and you, you can't sustain it. Somewhere, if you're effectively grounding, what you feel is a fountain of earth energy coming out of the earth. And it's like sitting with your pelvic floor on a fountain coming out of the earth. And you actually relax into the grounding and let the earth hold you up. And if you do that, and when you do that, um, you can sit forever. Deep horse. And that's a really good way to develop the grounding, um, initiating with the, the release into the... But ironically, you think, well, I have to be strong. I have to be very young with this. I have to drive my force into the earth and, and, and in a very, you know, warrior way, uh, you know, ground myself. When in fact, in my experience, the experience of my teachers, it's a release, it's a surrender to the earth that almost in response to the surrender creates this energy that lifts us, empowers us, strengthens us and holds us up. Hope that makes sense. <laughs>